Hello, hello, I'm Jim Heffron. Welcome to this introduction to LaTeX. This sequence of 11 videos takes you from a beginner to being able to do just about anything that an undergraduate would need to do. It's part of a course at joshua.smcvt.edu slash lessons. On each page, in addition to the video, there are some questions that would enable you to check your understanding. And then at the end, there's a quiz so you can get a certification in LaTeX. Of course, uh, watching the videos without taking the course is fine too. LaTeX is sophisticated software for creating documents. It's well known for its first quality output, particularly with mathematical material. It's standard professional practice to use LaTeX in the fields of mathematics or computer science or physics, and it's widely used in many other fields also. It's suitable for a thousand page book or for a five page lab report, for a teacher's presentation slides or for a student's homework hand in. LaTeX is part of a suite of software built around the typesetting engine tech. This is powerful software written by professionals for professionals. Naturally, it's free. But like any powerful software, LaTeX needs to be learned. That's why we have these lessons. So let's get started. Now, to write your own documents, for instance, to follow along with these lessons, you'll need the software. You can either install it on your computer or you can use it at an online site. Installing on your computer is free and easy. Go to tug.org slash techlive and follow the directions. It's completely free. There's install instructions for Unix. That includes Linux or Windows or Mac OS X. And you'll get everything that you could ever need. Online sites have the advantage that they don't require an install and they're also free to start, although they may charge for advanced access. Do a web search for something like use LaTeX online and you'll get plenty of hits. Personally, I use a laptop with Ubuntu Linux. I, uh, I like things e basic, so I edit with a text editor, I run LaTeX from the command line, and I view the output in a PDF viewer. If you have something different, you may be interested in a different version of these videos that uses what you have, whether it's a personal computer or an online site. Or you can just watch this series of videos, remembering that your screen will, use, will look slightly different. Okay, so I start, here's my editor Emacs, I start by opening a new file and I would have the file end with a direct, with a, with a .tex at the end. It's sometimes a good idea to open a fresh subdirectory for a fresh LaTeX project just because it makes it easier to find where all your stuff is. So normally I start a new LaTeX document, but for these videos I've written one in advance and put it on the website so you can download it. So I'll just open that. Here we go. It happens to be in this directory. Lesson 1, and it's called Lesson 1 Doc 1, and you see it ends with .tex. So open it up. You'll see that LaTeX documents are a mixture of text and commands. The commands start with a backslash. See the backslash, backslash, backslash? Every LaTeX document has two parts, a preamble and a body. On the top is the preamble. For instance, this one declares that the document is an article. Below the preamble, starting with the begin document and ending with the end document, is the document body. That's where most of the work takes place. If to turn this document into a PDF output, you save the file and run it through LaTeX program. If you have programming experience, then you'll recognize that making LaTeX documents has the same basic outline. We say that we use LaTeX to compile the source to the output. So let's try it. I'll go to the directory containing this file. And I'll run pdflatex, that's my program. And the name of the file, you remember, is lesson1, doc1. There's no need to write the .tex, it'll just use what we have here. And when I hit enter, it'll run the command. And you see that it, a bunch of stuff flies by on the screen. But it does say output written on lesson1doc1.pdf, that's what I want. I'll get one page. So let's go there and look at the directory and see what we got. Here we go. Lesson 1. There's Lesson1.doc1.pdf. I'll open it in my favorite PDF viewer. And there it is. Hello world, e to the i pi plus 1 equals 0. And how are you doing? 
Now, ordinarily, you'll probably want to write something a little different, so you might want to try fooling around with this document, make sure you can get it to do what you want it to do. If you edit it a little bit, you'll want to save it, save it, and run it again. Run it again. And you see what happens, of course, is that the document changed to reflect your edits. That's normally how I proceed. I edit, I run, I view. I edit, I run, I view. One thing that you'll see if you do a lot of this work is that you'll start seeing that you make little mistakes, maybe like a typo. Maybe you type that as D-O-C-U-M-E-T-N instead of N-T. And you don't notice it, so you save it and you run it. What happens? What happens when you make a mistake? Well, LaTeX, of course, spots that you made it some mistake here, and it says, uh, the begin document ended by N, and you see the end document, I don't know how to pronounce that, T-N. And it says it's on line eight. Sure enough, when you look there, that is line eight. There's the line eight at the bottom of the screen. Okay, so we've got to fix that error somehow. First thing we have to do to fix the error is to get out of this question mark. An X will do it, X followed by enter. Another thing that sometimes works is control D. I'll go up here, I'll edit the mistake, NT, save it, don't forget to save, save it, and run it again. Okay, and now you see that it works on back up to a working state. Error message can be frustrating. One strategy is to rerun LaTeX every paragraph or so. That way if you get an error, then you know pretty well where the error happened. Another good strategy is to open up a web browser and do a web search on the error message and probably what you find on the web will give you a pretty good idea of what you did wrong. Okay, that's it for the first lesson. The next lesson says more about the structure of a document. See you then.